I'm wearing my old geology hat today, which I used to wear a lot more when I did field geology, to show you something pretty neat. Have a look. Whoa, why is that rock ringing? Let's explore that together. I'm Luke, and this is Polymathy. Explosive eruptions, unthinkable subterranean pressures, continents in collision. Today, I'm going to take you on a journey back to the time of the dinosaurs, to the formation and destruction of the most massive mountains ever to exist on Earth, and deep inside the fiery cauldrons of volcanoes. And don't worry, there's going to be Greek and Latin to explore as well. And it all starts here. I'm at Ringing Rocks County Park, near where I grew up in Pennsylvania. In fact, I always loved coming here as a kid, much as I think these kids are enjoying themselves, because these rocks make a lovely ringing sound when you hit them. For a long time, early scientists and geologists couldn't figure out what made these rocks ring. These rocks are igneous rocks. Igneous comes from Latin igneus, meaning fiery. Igneous rocks include volcanic rocks, like basalt, and plutonic rocks, like granite. If igneous rocks are formed under the ground, they're called plutonic, and if they're formed above the ground, they're called volcanic. The rocks here are made of something called diabase, and in this condition, these sonorous or ringing rocks are also called phonolite, from phonos or phone, meaning voice, and lithos in Greek, meaning a rock. A sound rock, a rock with a voice. Diabase, also called dolerite or microgabbro, is a very peculiar type of igneous rock because it's not easily classified as definitely plutonic, meaning it formed deep under the ground where the god Pluto or Hades dwelled according to Greco-Roman myth, or volcanic, an above-ground igneous rock. Diabase is typically formed when magma, which is molten subterranean rock, approaches the surface through dikes and sills. Dikes are intrusive igneous bodies that form vertically, and sills are the same thing, just horizontal. When igneous rocks form deep below the Earth's surface, they cool slowly, which gives them time to form big, beautiful crystals, like in this granite. But the same magma erupted from a volcano on the Earth's surface will cool quickly. So you can't see the crystals at all, because they're so tiny, like in this rhyolite. In fact, rhyolite has the exact same composition as granite. The only difference between them is how quickly or slowly they cooled. Because diabase forms close to the surface, it cools faster than plutonic rocks, but slower than volcanic rocks, so we call it subvolcanic. And the fine crystals in the diabase are tiny but still visible. This boulder field is just a small part of a huge system of intrusive igneous rocks that can be found in the eastern part of North America. These igneous rocks formed when the great supercontinent of Pangaea broke apart, starting 220 million years ago in the late Triassic period. The great rifting of Pangaea caused two things to happen. One, it allowed magma to approach the surface and to eventually become the Ringing Rocks boulder field. But it also meant the destruction of one of the largest mountain ranges that may have ever existed on planet Earth, the suture between the continents that formed Pangaea millions of years before. The mere foothills of this once gargantuan mountain range, which was larger, longer, and taller than the Himalayas and the Andes combined, are the Appalachian Mountains in North America and similar ranges found in Africa and Europe. So that's how these igneous rocks got here. And over the course of millions of years, regions of these igneous intrusions of diabase became exposed. Thousands of years of freezing and thawing during the Pleistocene, that's the last ice age, broke the great slab of exposed rock into these boulders, creating the Felsenmeer you can see behind me. A Felsenmeer being a geological term taken from German meaning a sea of boulders. But what makes them ring? This has been a matter of controversy for generations of geologists, but there has been little testing to rule out every hypothesis. It was once thought that the size and shape of certain boulders stacked in a particular arrangement in the field caused the ringing. 
but the rocks that do ring retain this ability even when extracted from the field. Any one of these boulders, of course, can weigh several tons, so that's no small feat. The relatively high iron content, 9-12%, was thought to be the source of the metallic ringing. But other rocks like plutonic gabbros and volcanic basalts have a similar composition and don't ring like this. There has been only one study that has truly shed light on the mysteries of the ringing rocks. In the 1960s, John F. Gibbons II and Stephen Schlossman from Rutgers University did an informal experiment where they took both musical live rocks from the field as well as dead ones that don't ring. They found that when they sawed open the dead rocks, they didn't have any notable change in sound or change in volume. But the live rocks, when sawed open, after 24 hours, expanded slightly and lost their ringing ability. The main difference between dead and live rocks was that the live rocks had less weathering when they were sampled from the field. This suggests that the ringing ability comes from internal compressive stresses within each live boulder. Compressive stresses that likely were imparted on the rock when it formed a few kilometers under the Earth's surface millions of years ago. And that weathering or sawing ultimately relieves that stress and takes the ringing away. This can be compared to a guitar string. When relaxed, it doesn't resonate musically, but when taut, it can make many different kinds of audible tones. Until more experiments are done on these mysterious, sonorous stones, which are found not just here in North America, but also at sites in England and Australia, the secrets of the ringing rocks may remain an enigma for generations to come. Thanks so much for taking this geology field trip with me. Walete. I am wearing my old geology hat today. I'm wearing my old geology hat today. Would you please hold the damn hand?